If you're the kind of JavaScript or TypeScript programmer that uses method chaining, like taking this array and then mapping it and filtering it and sorting it all using method chaining, then you are going to love this new TC39 proposal called the pipeline operator. And if you don't know what method chaining is, don't worry, I'll teach you about it along the way. Let's go check it out right now. All right, so I've got this array of numbers here. This is in a Quokka sheet, so we can see it dynamically evaluating. So the first thing we wanna do is filter this array so we only have the numbers 10 or above. And then we're gonna multiply the numbers that match that by two. Then we're gonna sum all that up using a reducer function, and the output that we get is 1300. So how is this actually working behind the scenes? What does it actually look like? Well, to understand that, I'm gonna create another Quokka sheet. I'm gonna put it side by side. We'll start off with our numbers. And the first thing I'm gonna do is that filter. So what's actually happening is that the output of numbers filter in our chaining method is actually creating a temporary in-memory array. Let's call it T1 as an example. And then the next thing we're gonna do is do that map. So the output of that filter, T1, is gonna become T2 as we take all of those array items and multiply them by two. And then finally, we're gonna use our reduce to take that T2 array that was the output of the map and create the output. And we get the same output, so everything is great. It just syntactically just reads a little easier when you use method chaining. But understand how it works by creating these temporary arrays of memory is really important to understand how this new pipeline operator works. So the first variant of the pipeline operator I'm gonna take a look at is the F-sharp version of the syntax. Yes, there are actually two different proposals for how to do the pipeline operator. One is called F-sharp and the other is called hack. So we're gonna take a look at the F-sharp version first. So I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna move it over so you can kind of see it in some more detail. So we'll start off with those numbers and now I'm gonna use my pipeline operator. And the syntax for that, in both these cases actually, is pipe and then greater than. So this F-sharp syntax works using unary functions. So at each step in the pipeline, you have to specify a unary function. And a unary function is just a function, but it takes a single input, unary. So in this case, we're gonna create a function that takes a single input, in this case, x. You can call it whatever you want. And then we're gonna run that filter on x. We're gonna do the same thing with the map and the same thing with the reduce. And there you go. So there you have it, the same example redone, but using this F-sharp pipeline syntax. But what's the advantage? I mean, there's the same number of lines. Actually, I would say this is even a bit more verbose than the dot method. Well, the advantage is that you can use anything as a unary function, right? So as an example, if I wanted to go and find out what the value of this filter was before it goes into the map, I basically would have to use a debugger for that. If I wanted to put a console log in there, that's gonna be a problem because arrays have no basic console log kind of built into them. But what I can do here, is I can add another function in here, a unary function, and then put console log in there. And that should work, right? Well, actually, yes. The console log actually does happen. If I go over to here to Quokka, we can actually see that the console log happens. The problem is that the contract of the unary function is that it has to actually output the input that goes into the next function. So in this case, we need to return x as the output of this function. Now that map has its input and everything's hunky-dory again. Now if you wanna make that even cleaner, you just simply define a function with that. For example, print it, and then simply just add print it, and there you go. Any unary function will do when it comes to this F-sharp syntax. So before we go into the hack syntax, I do wanna show you how I've got this set up so you can try for yourself. Of course, all of these projects are available to you for free in the link in the description right down below on GitHub. But if you want to set this up for yourself, I've installed the Quokka extension. I've told it that I'm using Babel for transpilation. And then for Babel, I'm using the pipeline operator plugin, and I'm giving it the proposal of F-sharp. So that's telling it that I want the F-sharp syntax as opposed to the hack syntax. All right, now let's go take a look at the hack syntax. All right, so I've jumped over here to our hack syntax folder, which has the hack syntax set up for Babel. So I've got the original version of our example here. Let's go and make a new Quokka sheet so I can show you what the hack syntax looks like. Again, I'll put them side by side, but I'll kind of roll it up there. We'll bring in numbers. So again, I'm gonna use that pipeline operator. It's the same as with the F-sharp syntax, 
But in this case, instead of using unary functions for each step in the pipeline, you use an expression. And that expression gets given a topic. And that topic is either, in this case, numbers or the output of the previous expression. And that topic is mapped to a specific character. I've defined that as percentile. You can make that whatever you want. So in this case, I'm going to use percent, and then I'm going to add my filter. I'll do the same thing for a map and the same thing for reduce. Console log that out. And there's the number that I get at the end, and everything's great. So I can put in console log like I did before, but we have the same problem that we had before with the F sharp syntax, which is that console log always outputs undefined. And whatever the output of the expression is, is what goes into the next item in the pipeline. So that's undefined. So that's where the map blows up. Not good. So how can we make an expression that returns effectively the topic? Well, <laughs> there's a thing that you can do in JavaScript that not a lot of folks know about. So you can first wrap the console in parentheses, which means make a sub expression. And then you can use a comma. And what comma says in JavaScript is whatever is at the end of the comma chain is the output of the expression. So if I say, for example, const a equals 10, comma 20, comma 30, what would you expect the value of a to be? Well, a is 30 because it's the last item in that expression. So that's why on line five, that console log actually works because sure, we do the console log, but the output of that expression is the last item in that comma chain. All right, so those are the two new flavors of this TC39 proposal, which I linked to in the description right down below. Go check it out for yourself. It is currently in stage two, and I think that's primarily because they don't know which of these two to go with, although apparently the F-sharp version has been rejected multiple times, so maybe the hack version is going to win out. I don't know. Leave your comments down below. Which one do you like of these two, or do you like any of them at all? If you want to see me cover any TC39 topics, please let me know again in the comments. All of this is great for engagement around this video, which I certainly love. Thank you very much for that. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.